What is the statistical test of independence between random variables? In order to illustrate the statistical test of independence, I've tried with a very simple example here between two random variables, x and y. x in blue can only have two outcomes, one or two. And then my random variable y in green can only have two outcomes also, but, it, but we're going to say it can be one or three. And that means that between them we have four joint outcomes and jo four joint probabilities. Inside the square, this is a probability matrix, meaning that these are joint probabilities and they need to sum to 100% which they do. So this is valid. And it means, for example, that the 10% is a joint probability that x equals 1 and, and is the keyword that signifies joint probability, and y equals 1. And now we can illustrate that with what I think is the essential relationship I consider to be because it applies all three probability terms and this is true regardless of whether these variables are independent or not when we said as I explained in a previous video that the joint probability is equal to the unconditional probability multiplied by the conditional probability so in the case of this 10 percent joint probability it's the joint probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1, so it's equal to the unconditional probability that x equals 1, also called the marginal probability that x equals 1. And we know we can just sum all of the values in the row, and it's also right outside the square. So it's the unconditional probability that x equals 1 is 25%. And this can be a helpful memory mnemonic, too, because you can think about this is outside in the margins. And so margin. this is also called a marginal probability, if that helps. So we have 25% is the marginal probability that x equals 1. And we could multiply that by the conditional probability. Now, we can't read that right off the table. We have to do that division. We want the conditional probability that y equals 1 in the event of or conditional on x equals 1. That's given by 10% divided by 25%, which is 40%. 10% divided by 25% oops, is 40%. And you can see that by design, these 25% are going to cancel when we're back to the 10%. So I wanted to show how that's consistent by definition. And now, we look at independence. And hopefully this is an, an intuitive expression for what it means to be statistically independent. Most of the time this won't be true, but if y is independent, at least at this probability, it's going to be true that the, prob the probability of y or the unconditional probability of y is equal to its conditional probability. Hopefully that's intuitive because we're saying if y is independent of x, then what happens here with x doesn't impact the probability of y being 1 or 3. Now, if that makes sense, then we can just substitute that in here our, to our essential relationship, and we end up with really the statistical definition of independence between x and y, and it is that the joint probability of x and y is equal to the product of the unconditional probabilities, or, or we could say the product of their marginal probabilities. So that is also, I would just want to add, importantly, that is an if and only if condition. And so this is a test that needs to apply at all of these cells. If we find a single exception, then we can't say that X and Y are independent anymore. But you can see here, according to this first view here, if we just take the, very, the probability of Y, the probability of Y equaling 1 conditionally, notice how here... If x equals 1, then the conditional probability of y equal 1, as we said, is 10 divided by 25% or 40%. But on the other hand, if x is equal to 2, 
the conditional probability that y is equal to 1 will be equal to 30% divided by 75%, which also equals 40%. So we have a conditional probability that y equals 40% here, 40% here, and is equal to the y's unconditional probability of 40%. And so that's this test here, and that's going to apply to uh, y equaling 3 as well. And then in terms of this joint test here, it needs to be true for each of these cells. So for example, here at the pr joint probability that x equals 1 and y, equal one, y equals 1, we have to have 10% as the joint probability needs to equal 40% multiplied by 25%, which it does. Check there. In, for this cell, we need to have the joint probability of 15% needs to equal 60% multiplied by 25%, which it does. In this cell, the joint probability that x equals 2, y equals 1 is 30%. Does that equal 40% multiplied by 75%? It does. And finally, the joint probability that x equals 2 and y equals 3 of 45%, does it equal 60% multiplied by 75%? It does. For each of these four cells, this is true. These random variables, therefore, are statistically independent. Closely related to this is the idea that if these if x and y are independent, then it does necessarily follow that their covariance and correlation is zero. The converse is not necessarily true, but if independence, if they are independent, then covariance equals zero. And here, I've illustrated how that's true in this case. Well, we won't walk through each of the calculations, but we have ex the expected value of x is 1.75. That's a simple weighted average of the one and two, 1 times 25% plus 2 times 75%. Expected value of x is 1.75. The expected value of y is 2.20. Again, simple weighted average. And the expected value of their product, well, I put that that is not displayed, but I can expand it here quickly. And you'll see that to get the expected value of the product, I multiply the prob each of the probabilities by the product of x and y. So in this first cell, x times y is 1 times 1 is 1 with probability of 10%. In, uh, oh, I think I went across here. What did I do? I went, yes, I went across. So for this cell, we have a 15% probability of a, of a product of 3 times 1. And for this cell here, 30% probability of 1 times 2, their cross product. And finally, a 45% probability of a cross product 3 times 2 is 6. And so you can see I can just um, multiply 1 times 10%, get 0.1, 3 times 15% sum those, and I get the expected value of the product of x and y happens to be 3.85 in this case. So I'm going to close that back because I just wanted to calculate in order to show how the covariance has a very elegant ex expression here. It's the expected cross product minus the product of expectations. In this case, 3.85 multiplied, I mean minus, 1.75 times 2.2 equals zero, as we expected and as is required by the fact that these random variables are independent. Independent implies zero covariance. And by the way, without going into the calculations, that means I can uh, standardize the covariance into a correlation by dividing by the product of standard deviations, and I also get a correlation of zero. So, and hopefully you can notice the pattern relationship here. Now, they're not exactly the same, right? Because I have probabilities up here, but this, this condition here does imply this 
I have expectations here, not quite the same as probabilities, but notice the pattern, right? Because this is our statistical test of independence, meaning that the joint probability minus the product of marginals must equal zero, right? If we just subtract each side by the product of marginals, notice that relationship to this pattern for the covariance, right? The ex expected cross product minus the product of expectations. Okay, so the last thing I'll do is just introduce some non um, some non-zero correlation of this. Real simple, and because to show you how easy it is, how the fact that independence is really a rare condition. If I just bump this joint probability up to 15%, and as soon as I do that, I have violated here. This is no longer a probability matrix. It doesn't sum to 105%. It doesn't sum to 100% anymore. We can't really have a probability function under that conditions. So I need to take this down to 10%, for example. Now I'm back to a valid probability, but I will be able to find at least one violation here to this statistical test. And notice it's supported by the fact that I just introduced, so these are no longer statistically independent. It means that it no longer follows that the covariance is zero. And in fact, my slight shift introduced a slight positive covariance between X and Y and actually a linear correlation here of 17%. Linear correlation, not the, greatest, not the best metric for this very simple matrix, but nonetheless. So I hope that's a, hopefully that's helpful. Here's the key idea. Here's the statistical test of independence. The joint probability must be equal to, in all outcomes, the product of marginal or unconditional probabilities. Thank you.